As a kid, I grew up in a very conservative, very religious town, so things were a lot different than if you live in a big city. And one of the most obvious differences is the mindset that everything is evil. Power Rangers? Evil. SpongeBob? Evil. Avatar? Evil. And so on. And to no one's surprise, my parents followed this trend that somehow everything fun had the power to cause demon possessions. So I had many, many restrictions placed on me as a kid. I wasn't even allowed to play Pokemon as a kid. Pokemon for Mew's sake. In fact, I wasn't even allowed to play as Pikachu or the other Pokemon characters in Super Smash Bros. So whenever I had to play as them to, I don't know, unlock new characters, like you have to do that in Super Smash Bros. Melee to unlock Marth and those kinds of characters anyway. When I'd have to do that, I'd have to unplug the audio cord for my TV and basically just hope my mom didn't come in because, you know, I'd get in trouble. And all this trouble just because some televangelist named Pat Robertson said, Oh, Pokemon is evil. Don't let your kids play that. Screw you, Pat Robertson. But there is one game in my collection that not only were my parents okay with me playing, but they actually encouraged me to play it more. And today, I'm going to revisit it after all these years. The Bible game for the Game Boy Advance. Oh sheesh, it's been like, what, five to six years since the last time I've played this game? It's been a long time, I know that for sure. Anyway, let's play it on my new GBA player, the device that lets you play GBA games on your GameCube and makes it possible for me to record GBA games because it's literally impossible to record them on a standard GBA. Not to mention mine has 20 trillion scratches on it. Without further ado, let's go. Ah, the music. This is the sound of nostalgia. And not the good kind, it's the kind you get after a return to school after summer break. I really don't want to play this game, but I have to because if I don't, other people will, and we can't have that. Uh... Okay, so even before I start the game, I've already found something to complain about. No friggin' save feature, instead you have a password system. Why? This game came out in 2005, for crying out loud. 2005! The same year the Xbox 360 came out, and they're too cheap to put in a save battery? The Legend of Zelda on NES came out almost 20 years earlier, and it had a save feature. You had two decades to learn from this, and you just gave up. If this game had come out for the Genesis or Super Nintendo, I could accept it. But it came out for the GBA in 2005! Give me a break! Okay, enough of my rant, let's move on. When you start a new game, you're greeted with an opening cutscene where mom and dad try to tell their children about the armor of God. Being kids, of course, they don't understand that it's actually a metaphor and think it's an actual suit of armor. Then they drift off and start to daydream. In their dream, the Master Deceiver, aka Satan, has escaped and he and the Deceivers, aka Demons, have stolen the keys that unlock the location of this armor of God and it's up to you to stop and recover the armor. Okay, so there are a few things about the plot I don't understand. First, the game designers do realize that in the Bible, Satan doesn't get thrown into hell until the end of time, and this game clearly doesn't take place after that. Plus, how would the devil even escape from hell? Second, why doesn't God do anything, instead leaving the fate of humanity to a kid? In fact, God would technically be the one to let him out. Why? What's his plan? Now I know what you guys are thinking. It says you're deceivers, not demons or devils. Well, if the game designers didn't want us to think that, then why the heck did they make them look so similar to them? Okay, I think I'm being a little too harsh. This is a game taking place in a kid's imagination after all, so I'll cut them some slack. After the intro, you get the choice to either play as a boy or girl. Gender equality, yay! And that reminds me, the last time I played this game, I hadn't reached maturity yet, and I was actually repulsed by girls, so I feel kind of awkward now. So I'm going with the boy, I guess. Wait, the game is loading? That's a first. I've never seen a GBA game, or even most cartridge games have to load, so the game must have something pretty impressive to throw at us. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. These are the game's graphics. I don't remember them being this bad as a kid. The gameplay is simple. You run around a level collecting scrolls, jumping on spiders, and looking for deceivers. But for the most part, you just run past spiders. There's not really any reason to fight them, except sometimes they drop scrolls or hearts, but there's enough of them in the level already, and you just take more damage than they're worth. 
It also doesn't help that there's almost no indicator telling you when you've lost some health, except this weird slurping sounds that spiders make. But by the time you figure out it's coming from them, you've already lost quite a bit of health. So just forget the spiders and go for your main goal, Deceiver slash Demons. These guys are scattered throughout the level and you have to fight them to get key pieces which you need to complete the level. When you approach them, they throw fireballs at you, and unlike when you're hurt by spiders, there's actually an indicator when you get hit. Why, couldn't there be one on both? Anyway, you wanna guess how you defeat them? You don't have any weapons, or attacks. I dare you, just guess. You run into them and answer Bible questions. Why run into them? Couldn't you fight them or something like in Legend of Zelda and then answer Bible questions, or just not answer them at all? Also, if you're wondering what the scrolls were for, they basically give you the answers, only you can only use them before the quiz, and you have to memorize them. But screw that, because the most effective way I found out how to pass the quizzes is to just guess. After all, most of them are pretty lean on how many you need to pass, and if you do fail, the deceiver just flies away a couple feet. Also, I have to say, a lot of these verses are pretty violent for a kid's game. Ananias and Sapphira dying for not giving God all their money? Jesus getting impaled by a spear? Judas hanging himself? Most Bible media for kids try to skip over or censor these parts of the Bible, but this game goes all in. And I kind of like that. Okay, I might not talk about some of the stories in the Bible about sex, but it's still pretty dark and mature for a kid's game. Getting back on track, after you pass the quiz, you get a piece of the key. Then you go throughout the level defeating the Seavers and collecting all the pieces of the key. Then you unlock the door to the church where you go in and find the first piece of the armor of God, the Shoes of Peace, and level 1 is over. Moving on to level 2, the desert. Not really much is added here except these caves, which are cool I guess, but wait, I died? I couldn't see that abyss there. And like I said earlier, I'm playing this on a TV through the GBA player. Just imagine how hard it would be to see on a standard GBA without a backlit screen. Other than that, the cave's actually the funnest part of the game. It's the only part of the game to feel like a game and not like a children's quizzing booklet. Unfortunately, these cave sections are pretty short, and you'll be back in the main world before long. Then, you do exactly what you did in the first level. Walk into Deceivers, answer Bible questions, and collect key pieces. Then you make your way to the church and obtain the next piece of the armor of God. Level 3 makes things interesting, and by making things interesting, I mean by just adding trees, because that's the only thing that's different about this level. The next level is pretty bland, so I'll just skip over it. The next level after that is a winter level, because what's a video game without a winter level? Am I right? The only thing this place adds are ice physics, which are annoying, but not nearly as bad as you might think. At this point of the game, the gameplay is really starting to get redundant. You don't get any new items, power-ups, or you don't even really fight any new enemies, just spiders, scorpions, and that kind of stuff. There's not really much to say about this level that I haven't already said, so I'm just gonna skip to the end where we get the next piece of the armor of God. Now there's only one piece of armor and one level left, this time taking place on a tropical island. And like you might guess, it's the same as the rest of the game, only it brings back platforming, but this time it's not your standard side-scroller, but more like a maze. And will you believe that I made the same mistake I made earlier and fell into a hole because I couldn't see where it was? Yeah, I only died like three times while playing this game, and two of them were just because I couldn't see where a hole was. After I figured that segment out, I actually had a semi-fun time here. Sure, it's not Super Mario World or anything, but it's the only part of the game I've had any kind of fun in so far. Finally, we defeat the Deceivers, reassemble the key, and get the final piece of the armor of God, the Sword of the Spirit. Now that we have all the pieces of God's armor, it's on to the final boss, the Master Deceiver, aka Satan, but the game designers didn't think that the name was family friendly enough. Anyway, we make it to hell, don't ask me how that makes any sense, and we fight the Master Deceiver. You guys wanna guess how you defeat him? Maybe you fight him with the Sword of his Spirit, or deflect his fireballs back at him. Or heck, maybe even do three Bible quizzes instead of one. Nope, you just answer one Bible quiz and defeat him just like any other Deceiver in the game. Pretty anticlimactic if I do say so myself. And he gets thrown into hell. Wait, wasn't he already in hell? Also, if the Master Deceiver had just escaped, then what the heck was he doing roaming around the place he had just escaped from? It doesn't make any sense! Seriously, was this a guy a threat to anyone? It's almost like he was asking to be thrown back in hell. Anyway, after that, the game says congrats and that's it. No closing cutscene, no credits. Well, there are credits, but you need to access them from the main menu. Well, that was the Bible game. And it sucked!
It really did! This is probably the worst game I've played on this channel after NHL Breakaway 99, which was better gameplay-wise, but... You couldn't pause it or press any buttons without going back to the title screen, and that pretty much cancels all the good of the game. Moving back to the Bible game, though, there are so many things wrong with this game. The gameplay is dull and feels more like a Sunday school lesson than a video game. The levels are also way too similar to each other, and don't have any unique characteristics to keep them from feeling redundant. There's only like three or four enemies in the game, if you count deceivers as enemies, and then top it all off with an anticlimactic ending, and you have yourself a bad freaking game. The only upside is that the game's really short, and it will only take you around an hour to beat if you know what you're doing. That's why I'm giving this game an F, something you never want to see. Well, I guess we might as well look at the credits to see who worked on this game. Well, there's a lot more people on here than I thought there would be, and also, why are there so many people on quality control? What did these people do? How can you have so many people who have quality in their job description work on your game and still release a piece of crap? How? Oh, well, that person must have had a hard time in school. Wouldn't want to have his name. If I were him, I'd change my last name as soon as I turn 18. I feel kind of bad for him. Don't listen to the crowd, Steve. I know you're gonna become the best quality controller of all time if you just put your heart into it. Anyway, I honestly have no clue how to end this video. So let's be just like the game and cut it. Hello, thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me, because I don't get a lot of people who watch my videos. Anyway, um, if you like this video, um, be, tell be sure to tell me what kind of videos you want me to make. Like, if you want more videos like this, or Top 10s, or All Attacks, where, well, All Attacks, I don't really do much anymore, for certain reasons, but, I'll, um, I don't know what to say, other than, this has been Josh from Alvaleaf Gaming.